I spent two hours the other day setting up my brand new Maros MS-110 smart plugs using the instructions that came in the box. Spoiler alert, that never ended up working. Maybe you're familiar with this error screen from Maros or this error screen from Apple. I finally figured out a way to get these up and running right out of the box in six easy steps. And before we wrap up, I'll show you where these plugs have been the most useful for me personally around the house based on about four months of use. So grab your MS-110s if you have plugs already and let's get you up and running. So step one is fairly simple. You're just gonna open this baby up and plug her in. But before you do that, let me share with you a little tip that really helped speed up the process and save my back in future steps. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab yourself a power strip that you can easily have next to you. Now, if you don't have a free one or the one you have isn't long enough or it's not easy to get to or what have you, just make sure that you find an outlet with both outlet spots free and available. So nothing plugged into the bottom of that one. Another thing that you wanna do is download the Maris app on your smartphone. Even if you're planning on managing this device in Apple Home, we're still going to need the Maris app in a later step, so make sure you have that ready to go. So once you've done that, go ahead and plug it in and it should start blinking amber and green. Now you'll need to be able to scan the QR code located interestingly on the bottom of the plug. So if you're going the power strip method, just make sure that whatever hole you plug into, you can still access the bottom of that code. So basically, if you plug it in like this, make sure that this side is available. So if you're going outlet method, just make sure you use that top outlet and that's gonna save your back a little, not much, but a little. And every little bit helps, especially when you are setting up more than one or two of these at once. Now from here, we're just gonna wait for that plug to blink amber and green for a mind bending 10 to 15 minutes. I know, I know. That seems crazy, but trust me, if you don't wait those 10 to 15 minutes in this step, it's gonna drastically reduce the likelihood of the next steps working, and you're just gonna end up spending more time fighting with it than had you just waited in the first place. So I suggest just waiting the 10, 15. Now, if it's already got an attitude, meaning it's not blinking amber and green for you, you'll need to reset it. You can do that by holding down this button on the side here. I'll focus, focus. So yeah, you can hold down this button on the side um, for five seconds and that will reset the plug. But at this point, it really should be blinking for you and you shouldn't have to worry about it. Before we get to the next steps, and I mean, we have time, let's address the elephant in the room. Why even get a Maros MS-110 if it's this hard to connect? And if you already have them, why not just return them for something else? Well, in my experience, the market is somewhat limited for devices that work with everything. And yes, there is matter now, but I haven't really been sold on the matter devices to be honest. The MS-110s are still one of the most affordable options on the market for your Apple Home. And once they are paired, they work seamlessly. Really, really good. Now I'm sure a small group of people have experienced dropouts or where the device stops talking to your Apple Home app. But honestly, I've been using these for four months in my home and I've had zero dropouts, zero issues. In fact, I love the two pack so much that when it was time to get this studio powered, I knew I absolutely had to have everything running through those Marrow smart plugs. So I scooped a four pack. Okay. So before we get to the best place to use these in your home, let's circle back to step one, check that smart plug and verify that it's still blinking amber and green. If it is, you're gravy, baby. And if it's not, you will need to reset that plug. But at this point, it really should be blinking amber and green and you should be good to go. Now we're almost ready to get to the next steps, but not quite. So let's take a look at some of my favorite places I've been using these around the house to make life easier and save some time. You ever get up to hit the bathroom and you had no idea that the house had gotten dark? <sighs> Same. What to do, what to do. 
If you get up now, hit that hall light switch, you'll be absolutely blinded at this point. But fumbling around in the dark hall doesn't really seem like a great idea either. So this is your new bathroom beacon. Turn on the night Plug light. in a nightlight into the MS-110 and you can have Siri turn on the bathroom light for you. Depending on your layout, this is gonna push a soft glow out into the hallway for you to follow. No more stub toes. All right, this one's a personal favorite of mine. So you've had a long day and it's time for bed, in theory. But what do most of us like to do when we actually go to bed? Lay in bed watching TV in the dark, which is terrible for our eyes, horrible. Add in the fact that most of us stare at a screen all day already, this is really contributing to your eye fatigue and can even play a role in sleeplessness. The main thing keeping people in this habit of watching TV in bed in the dark is that we don't wanna have to get up out of the cozy warm bed and turn off the lights when we're starting to fall asleep. Help your eyes out and give them the light that they deserve. For me personally, I'm obsessed with red in the bedroom. It's super soothing on the eyes after a long day and it looks pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. With the Marrow Smart Plug, you can just ask Siri to turn off the bedroom light or take it a step further. Hey Siri, and with night. the Good Night command, you could have Siri yeah. turn off all of your smart plugs in your entire home. So I've got two more for you. What's worse than starting your morning without your morning bevy? Nothing nothing's worse. You want your drink hot and fresh and you want it by the time you hit the kitchen. Using an e-kettle or a coffee pot with a smart plug just kind of makes sense. Just make sure your kettle switch is on and your smart plug is off before you go to bed. As long as you've done that, you can ask Siri the next morning to turn on the kettle and your drink will be ready for you by the time you hit the kitchen. Another great use case here is your slow cooker. Now I work from home, so I haven't gotten to test this one out yet because a 10 a.m. cook start for me isn't too tough. But if you're already out of the house by 10, absolutely crushing life, this is an excellent way to make sure that you have a hot and fresh home cooked meal waiting for you when you get back from your long day at work. Okay, we're almost ready to bang out the rest of these steps and they'll go much quicker. So let me grab my phone and show you the last place that I'm using these in my home today. And that's right above my head. So as you can see, I've got a power strip Velcro mounted up there and it's got Marrow smart plugs running all of the lighting in the studio. They're just Velcro mounted to this very pole here. And we'll talk about very poles in a couple weeks. So if you're interested in seeing more about lighting rig, definitely subscribe because it's coming. Using smart plugs in your home studio or your home office is an absolute game changer. Hey, when Siri, it's time to work, you just RFC tell Siri to turn on the office and bang. The mood is set, the vibe is right, and it's time to create. So I want to know, where do you plan on using your smart plugs? And if you already have them, what are you using them for now? Let me know in the comments your can't live without, absolute favorite, must have smart plug use cases. All right. By now, your smart plug should be ready to go. And I appreciate you hanging around and talking a little shop with me. So let's grab your plug and bang out the rest of these steps and get you up and running. All right, so for step two, I want you to head on over to your system settings on your phone. And under the Wi-Fi section, you should see the Maros Wi-Fi pop up. So go ahead and click on that. And at this point, it's going to ask you if you want to add this as a home accessory. Now, this is a new step. Originally, when I was filming this video, this wasn't happening, and that's why I made this video. So if you do get this prompt, go ahead and hit Add to Home and Wi-Fi. Bop. And then it's gonna give you this screen where it wants you to scan the bottom of the QR code and that will take you all the way into system setup. Now, if you don't have that, which is probably why you even clicked on this video in the first place, you're going to just click on the Wi-Fi as is that little prompt will not pop up and then you'll just be connected as you see on the screen right now. So this is your Wi-Fi settings. You have your connection right here. That little blue check mark means you are connected to the Maros Wi-Fi. So you're all good there. So this step right here is why we waited the 15 minutes in the first place. I found that if I didn't wait, then the Wi-Fi would not pop up in this section here. And yeah, it would just be a whole mess. 
So once it has popped up for you, go ahead and tap on it like I did and we're moving on. So you remember the prep that we did in step one? Well, it's time to open that Meros app and add a new device. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the Wi-Fi, pop into Meros, and right here at the top, there's a plus icon. Go ahead and hit that. So I've found that the auto search function for devices has been hit or miss. If it's working for you, then right here where it says no device found, that's where your device will be. If it's there, just tap on it and continue on following the instructions from the app and you'll be good to go. But if it's not there, like mine isn't right here, then we're going to have to go about this another way. So you're gonna tap smart plug, locate MS110 on the list, should be the very top option. And from here, you wanna verify once again that you are blinking amber and green, you should be, so hit next. And hit next again. And now it's gonna ask you, do you want Apple Home or non-Apple Home? Now, considering that we are Apple Home users, it would make sense to us to choose the Apple Home version. However, it doesn't work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up in the non-Apple Home variety, and then we'll add it to our Apple Home later. In order to do that, you're just gonna hit the non-Apple Home Kit version right there at the top, and it's gonna want you to verify that you have logged on to this Wi-Fi. So to check that, you'll just go to the Wi-Fi settings and you'll click on your Wi-Fi and you'll connect to that guy right there and hit Apple Home. And now um, they're gonna want you to go ahead and scan that QR code at the bottom of your device. So you can go ahead and do that. So if your Apple Home option isn't popping up, you're not getting that little floating window on this step, then we're gonna go ahead and give you another way to get your device paired. So what you're gonna do is starting from the beginning again, right here on the homepage of the Maros app, at this point you wanna have already connected to the device Wi-Fi in your settings app. So then you come back into Maros right here, you hit the plus button, and it's going to search for a device. So we're gonna assume that it did not find your device. You're going to hit the smart plug, hit the MS110, verify your blinking lights, blah, 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 hit the non home kit version. And then for here, you're gonna hit I've connected to device Wi-Fi because we've already taken care of that previously, right? We went into our settings and we selected that Maros Wi-Fi. So here you're gonna go, I've already connected to device Wi-Fi and it's going to print this screen where it's going to take a few minutes to hunt down your device and pair it up. Now I'm gonna actually back out of this. I'm gonna cancel this because I've already set up all of my smart plugs. So let me go out of here. But once that scanning process is done, it'll find your smart device, your smart plug, and you can go ahead and name it. And once you've done that, you can hit done and it will pop up right here on your dashboard in the Maros app. So you'll wanna pop into here from time to time and just make sure that all of your devices have been updated to the latest firmware. So in order to do that, you're gonna hit the user button. Um, they want me to rate them. I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> so you're gonna go into the user button here and scroll down to system, tap on firmware update. And if there are any of your plugs that need updating, this is where you'll see that list. And as you can see, all of my plugs are completely updated, all good to go there. So we're 90% there now. Let's get this plug into our Apple home so we can do cool voice commands. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? So you're gonna open the Apple Home app, bop, and add a new accessory by clicking the plus button at the top, add accessory. And now once again, you have your floating window. So go ahead and scan the QR code at the bottom of your plug. Give me a second and I will get up and scan the one that I have ready to go here quick second. All right, so once you've scanned your outlet, you're gonna let Apple do its thing. It takes about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute for this prompt that you're seeing right now to pop up. Basically, it's going to identify whatever device you scanned and it's going to assume what it is. In this case, it got it right, it's an outlet, so let's go. You're gonna hit add to home 
And now it's going to start initializing and setting up all the things it needs to do inside the app to get this thing into your home. So we're just gonna let this thing run for uh, about a minute or two. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, so originally, I, it looks like it's actually cut off a little bit at the bottom here on the screen so you can't see it. But originally it said setting up and then it said adding to home. So once it goes through that process, it's going to give you a little spinny wheel here and you get to decide where this smart plug is going to live. So for me, this is just a demo. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it, hmm. Don't make it complicated. I'm gonna use kitchen and we'll just set this up as if it's gonna be for the crock pot. So we'll hit continue, ba bop. And then you get to name your outlet. So for me, I like to name my outlets based on the device I'm gonna use it with. Um, so that way I can tell S-I-R-I <laughs> to, for example, turn on the kettle or run the studio or turn off the living room lights. So for this, we're just gonna call it crock pot and hit continue. And now it's going to do its thing. You get to choose what the little picture is. Um, for me, I'm gonna leave it outlet because it's not a light and it's not a fan. <laughs> And then boom, outlet added to my home. Go ahead and hit done, or you can hit view in home. Let's go ahead and hit view in home actually. And that's going to bring us directly to this light switch. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear it from here because I have this plugged in behind me, um, but I'm gonna stop talking for a second and see if you can hear this work. Okay, nice little clicking action there. I really do like that audible feedback just to let me know that like, hey, whatever room I'm leaving, things have been turned off. I don't need to turn around. I don't need to double check. I don't need to verify. I can hear it, which is amazing. What a ride. But now you know the exact steps to get these set up so you'll never get stuck in an endless reboot loop ever again. So if I saved you some time, if I helped you out today, throw this video a sweet little thumbs up. It really helps to support the channel. Next week, I'll be adding more of these smart plugs into the studio, and I'll also be running 50 feet of LED light strip all the way around the ceiling. So if you wanna see that project go down, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out. Unless you're watching this in the future, in which case the video is already on your screen and you don't have to wait. Later. Later.